Well, a warm welcome. It's actually Monday the 14th of March today. Now, a few days ago, we put up a video about this medication here, uh, ivermectin. Uh, now, this uh, was discovered by Santoshi Amura, developed by William Campbell. They jointly won the Nobel Prize for it in 2015. As it is, I think it's fair to say, revolutionised the field of uh, parasitology, making quite uh, dramatic differences to improve people's lives in Africa, particularly getting rid of parasitic diseases. Now, I did put on two articles at that time. I talked about two articles. Uh, the, 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 there was this, this was the second one I talked about here. Uh, that was the second one there. Uh, in, in, uh, so that, that was a citywide study in, in Brazil, a peer-reviewed article. It's all, it's all there, public domain, readily available. Now, the other one um, turned out to be an abstract, which we understand has been withdrawn. It's been withdrawn, apparently. We, we don't really know the full story. There's a lot of fuss on Twitter about it. And... Um, but if you actually look, I'm not going to show the website there, but the International Journal of Infectious Diseases really needs to tidy up their back catalogue of uh, pages because it's still there, still downloadable, still appears to be a scientific abstract. But anyway, no point going there. That's finished. But this part of the study is, uh, is this part of the video is still, is still there and it's still in the peer-reviewed literature. And a very interesting study it is. And this is the opportunity to, to watch it because I've obviously deleted the video that was based on a flawed abstract. Now, this next study we want to look at is, is um, prophylaxis. So this, this shows that patients treated with... Uh, the, the previous study shows that pe people actually admitted who were already sick, if they were given ivermectin, they were much more likely to survive than if they were given uh, remdesivir. Uh, this is on prophylaxis, but they did follow through to hospitalizations and deaths as well. And it's all really convincing. P less people with ivermectin were got the infection, less people were hospitalized who took ivermectin, less people died who took ivermectin. But don't take my word for it, we're going to look at the study. Um, so here's the study here. It's peer-reviewed. Um, it's a, it's a peer-reviewed study. And these people here are mostly independent, well, they, they are scientists and uh, clinicians. Um, because a lot of this research is uh, clinician-led, because the pharmaceutical companies uh, don't carry out research into ivermectin that I'm aware of. Why should they? There's no money in it. Um, anyway, th th this is this is that uh, this this is the study we're looking at. Yeah, that's the last one. Sorry, this is the study we're looking at now. So, um, in this study, they they uh, they invited the entire population of uh, Inja, this city in Brazil, to a medical visit to enrol in the program. So, the whole population was invited in this city in Brazil. Uh, not a sample, the whole population. Ivermectin was offered as an optional treatment to be taken for two consecutive days. Two consecutive days every 15 days at a dose of 0.2 milligrams per kilogram per day. Now, this is a very small dose. This is this is the smallest dose. So um, doses double this or treble this have often been used. So if we see an effect here with this very small dose, it's likely to mean that ivermectin is indeed having an effect. And we'll see that it does, even at this very small dose, 0.2 milligrams per kilogram. A study analysis consisted of comparing ivermectin users with non-ivermectin users. So people, some people took up the offer, some people didn't. They ended up with users and non-users. Now, the precise data, of course, is given by the study. It's, um, and I liked this study, actually. It's very, um, very, very readable. Um, quite, you don't... It, it, a lot, a lot of studies. Uh, how long? How likely would you recommend this article to appear? Yes, <laughs> not just now. We'll do that after. Um, so, quite a readable study. Um, you get you get the impression that some authors of some studies, the CDC, CDC is particularly bad. You get the impression it's written not to be understood, whereas this is clear and clearly they've had uh, help or, or, or they're very competent in English already. And anyway, down down to the results. Uh, 223,000 citizens of uh, Itadja uh, were considered. Uh, they actually picked an N of uh, 159,561 to include in the analysis. Good number, very good number for, uh, for research, very good number. 
The first clinical trial I was involved in was called the International Study of Infarct Survival way back in hum 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 hum. In, when was it actually? It was about 88, 89. And internationally, we recruited 36,000 patients in that trial. Uh, that, that was looking at, at the effects of the, the early uh, the drugs to break down clots in the coronary arteries. I mean, in, in my centre, we probably only recruited maybe 50 or 60 patients, but that went all together. And probably more than that, probably about 100 patients. Um, but, but it all went together, 36,000 patients internationally. And that was a big study. This is way bigger. Yeah, this is way bigger. This, this is a really, I mean, in research, these are just like huge numbers. So 159,000 people included in the analysis. Excellent numbers. Uh, 113,000 opted for regular ivermectin use. So we had uh, 113,000 with regular ivermectin use. And we had uh, 45,000 in this study uh, non-users. 23%. This is of the 159,000. So again, you can see very good. It's prospective as well. We've got comparing that group to uh, to that group. And it's prospectively collected, collected data. So we've got two excellent groups to compare. Now, looking at infections first of these, 4,311 ivermectin users were infected. So th th this is looking at infections first of all. Who got infected? 3.7% in the ivermectin group, and again we said it's a low dose. 6.6% .6 in the uh, in the non users group. So um, 3.7 got infected, indicating that looks like there's a prophylactic effect of taking even that small dose of ivermectin fortnightly. 44% reduction in COVID-19 infection rate. In other words, a big protection effect apparently there from taking ivermectin. Risk ratio initially was 0 0.56, which is pretty good. So that's that's what. Well, it's, it's as as we say a 44 a 44 percent reduction. Um, the regular use of ivermectin led to a 68 percent reduction in COVID-19 mortality. So moving on to mortality, it was a 68 percent reduction in mortality. So 44 percent. Reduction in infection rate, 68% reduction in, in mortality. And when we actually look at the deaths here, um, there was 25 deaths in the ivermectin group, 0.8%. And again, that gives us a nice group for comparison. That group there. 79 deaths amongst the ivermectin non-users. So again, we've got the comparison group, 2.6%. So we can see that way fewer people are dying in the ivermectin group. And again, we've got that nice intergroup comparison. The relative this there was uh, 0.32. In other words, what a 68% uh, improvement uh, protection effect from death with ivermectin group. Again, chances of that arriving by chance, uh, not 1 in 100, not 1 in 1,000, 1 in 10,000. So we're pretty sure that, that is a genuine result. And when adjusted for residual variables, reduction in mortality rate was 70%. I mean, wh why isn't this in, in the newspapers? 70% reduction in mortality in this study. I mean, this is just huge. And this is with a tiny dose of ivermectin every fortnight, acting as a prophylactus. You know, why are people not talking about this? It really does... This is why I think ivermectin is going to be one of the huge scandals of of this. It's almost as it's almost as if information has been deliberately suppressed throughout the pandemic. To be quite honest, no one's saying that's true, of course, but it's almost like that. It, it, it's, the, the the evidence just seems so powerful, present, and, and overwhelming. I mean, at seventy percent. How do you argue with a number like that? It's a very very high number. Uh, fifty six percent reduction in the hospitalization rate again forty four in the ivermectin group ninety nine in the um, non ivermectin group and again so we 've got the two groups for comparison after adjusting for residual variables reduction in hospitalization rate was sixty seven percent so the ivermectin group sixty seven percent less likely to be hospitalized again p equals zero point zero 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 one this result is phenomenally unlikely to have arisen by chance. This is impressive data from this study by anyone's standards. I mean, this really is impressive and it's all there, it's all written up, it's all peer reviewed. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, hopefully we might be able to talk to some of the authors at, at some point. It's, um, there you go. Have we missed a trick with ivermectin? Well, this paper would tend to indicate that is the case. 
Conclusion, in this large study, regular use of ivermectin as a prophylactic agent was associated with significantly, very significantly, as we've seen, reduction in COVID-19 infections, so less infections, less hospitalizations, and less deaths in the ivermectin group. I mean, the people that took ivermectin got less infections. They were hospitalized much less and they died much less. What is not to like? There you go. Um, well, I must say I did find that quite uh, interesting myself to re-listen to that after a, after a few days. Do go to the original paper, do read it and, and form your own opinions. Don't let people form opinions uh, for you. We are in a quest for objectivity. Thank you for watching.